Hey, thanks for tuning in. Real quickly, before we get started, I'd like to thank my friends at Tattoo SEO for making today's episode possible. Tattoo SEO specializes in search engine optimization for tattooers and tattoo shops, so they help you to come up higher in organic online search results for people looking to get tattooed in your area. That's kind of a generic explanation. What they can really do is to help put the clients who are looking for your type of work in front of you. So whether you are a street shop, trying to just bring generic business through the door or a single person private studio focused on large scale custom tattooing, they can drive the customers looking for what you do directly to your door. Now, something else that Tattoo SEO does that I think is invaluable and really sets them apart from any competition is that they can promote you for short periods of time wherever you may be traveling. So if you're like me and you travel to do guest spots or to work at tattoo conventions, they can promote you leading up to the actual event that you're working to ensure that you're actually tattooing at the show rather than twiddling your thumbs and watching everyone else tattoo. I'll give you a real life example. So last year I was offered a booth at a show in Arizona about three weeks before the show was actually taking place. So I wanted to go and tattoo, but I hadn't promoted myself for that show leading up. So I had no clients in that part of the country and didn't want to sit around and not tattoo. So I reached out to my buddy Tony Sink at Tattoo SEO and asked if they could help to promote me in the short period of time left leading up to that event. And lo and behold, I was book solid by the time the event got there. I tattooed all weekend and it was a complete success. So whether you're going to do a week long guest spot in Southern California, doing a tattoo convention in New York City, they can help to promote you for those periods of time leading up to the events. That is a huge, huge benefit for working with Tattoo SEO. So I definitely recommend that you give these guys a shot by clicking the link below and signing up. You will get 50% off of your first month if you mentioned that you heard about them on Fireside. Thank you guys for supporting what we do and enjoy the episode. So good, all right, here's our in. Hey, welcome to the Fireside Tattoo Podcast. We're being serenaded by electric violins in the background here at the at the uh, Space City Tattoo Expo. I was telling yesterday, I was telling uh, Killian, we podcasted with him, that I, I screw up on, I know what show I'm at, I know it's Space City, but everyone calls it like Tattoo and Art Gathering, Tattoo Expo, oh, yeah, Tattoo yeah, yeah. Festival. And, and I always want to get it right, but I almost never do. And he said I should just call them all tat shows. Tat I, shows, yeah, yeah so man. I mean, that definitely sounds like it works for me, for <laughs> sure, yeah, right? So, so this is the... Uh, uh, this is the Space City Tat Show. I'm Jake. This is Matt. And uh, we don't know each other super well. We met yesterday, but we've learned a little bit about each other. So let's uh, let's jump in. You, you had told me uh, earlier, so let me get this stuff out from under my legs. You told me earlier that you started as kind of a comic kid. Yeah, uh, grew up, you know, like uh, Wolverine, Spider-Man, Superman, you know, kind of DC, Marvel kid until Spawn came out. And that, you know, that was... Yeah. kind of a turning point for that but yeah comic books were definitely like the biggest influence for me and made me just want to draw all the time as a kid you know yeah yeah what where did you grow up what area uh in georgia uh outside of atlanta a little town called powder springs oh okay okay so you're still tattooing in your hometown basically or close uh, yeah really close like probably you know like 30 miles from my hometown yeah yeah and so you had you had mentioned to me earlier when we were talking that you had gotten in some trouble as a kid spent a little bit of time locked up and that's actually crazy enough how you started tattooing yeah, um, yeah, you know, inside of, of prison, tattooing is uh, is uh, is of some values, and it's uh, certainly something that goes on a lot. So that when I, I experienced that, it made me start thinking like, actually, this might be something I could use yeah. to kind of, you know, direct my life in a positive direction. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, when I got out, I just kind of wholesale went after it with tattooing and never stopped. So you'd never considered really tattooing before that? It wasn't a, an art form you were, thought you were into? No, um, I mean, I grew up in this small town in Georgia. You know, it's fairly conservative. No one in my family had tattoos. I mean, and uh, it, it just wasn't that big, really, where I was at, I suppose. And uh, I never really considered it at all. Yeah. I was the same way, man. I grew up drawing. I, I wasn't as big of a comic kid as, as a lot of my friends in the tattoo industry. But I, um, but I did grow up drawing, and I never considered 
I, I never thought of tattooing as an art form, to be honest. I never, yeah. It never crossed my mind. I thought I would go into design or illustration or yeah. whatever, but it, it never occurred to me that it would. What, what year was this? That you, so what, what, what year did you start tattooing or start, or where were you introduced to it? So, uh, like, professionally tattooing? Like no, when I, just when, you fir- when it first, like, got on your radar or something. Probably, you like, 05, you know, somewhere around yeah. there, like yeah. mid-2000s, you know. Yeah. Um, so before social media, yeah. before you saw them on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah, it was like screen. tattoo magazines, you know. The, yeah. I guess that was the first thing, really, like tattoo, tattoo flash, you know, yeah. looking through those things constantly, uh, getting everything I could out of it, Yeah. you know. That, I wonder if that's when, I mean, I, I always feel bad saying that I didn't, you know, have any real respect for tattooing, but I didn't know, excuse me, any um, artists in tattooing. Yeah. I, th- I thought it was like bikers that didn't want real jobs. Right. I mean, that's kind of the same way I think I looked at it to some extent. The guys I knew who had to, tattoos were, ironically enough, like guys who'd been to prison or guys who were in the Navy, you know, older guys who'd been to Vietnam, stuff like that, and they had these old, little, small, blurry tattoos. Yeah. I, did, I didn't ever look at it as something that was like this, you know, great art form. Just like you, I hadn't seen, like, great tattoos until I was probably – you know, around 20 or something, you know, 18, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, you know, social media definitely changed changed that and put it in the uh, in, in, in front of everyone. So when you when you got started, I mean, I, you know, I, I, like everyone starting out, I guess you just did what, whatever you could do. You didn't have a, a true mentor. So you get you get out of prison. How do you pursue it from there? I mean, it's, it's something that you feel like is like giving you a purpose, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, what you know, I didn't know anything about the proper tattoo culture, if you will. You know, the traditional way everything goes, apprenticeship, shops, how, etiquette, everything. I knew nothing about any of that. I just knew I liked to tattoo, I loved to draw, and I wanted to try to do it. So uh, I just went, you know. Started doing yeah, it. Yeah, just started, like, yep. you know, looking at the magazines and went online and found, like, I don't know, like, Worldwide Tattoo Supply or something mm-hmm. like that. And, or, and, you know, maybe eBay. I don't even remember. But it was, you know, yeah. mid-2000, 2010, kind of that time period. And, uh, yeah, just ordered some stuff and had some willing friends who let me tattoo them and you know that went as you would expect yeah, not yeah. very well with my little shiny <laughs> chrome tattoo machines that i didn't know how to set up so right yeah it was interesting and then i kind of like on and off kept at it i never really stopped i had a good friend of mine actually who uh who was my boss i was working at a zaxby's at the time and while i was tattooing on the side and uh, my boss was like giving me the same day off as him and would pay me the amount I would make if I was working to tattoo him. Oh, really? And he got like two full sleeves from me and uh, kept uh-huh. me tattooing. He was like, I'm not going to let you stop because you're good at this. Like, you, you could do something with this. You don't need to uh-huh. stop. And because uh, I was looking for other jobs and like thinking, ah, maybe I should try to go to some kind of trade school. Man, I don't know if this tattoo thing's going to really work. Yeah. I can't get in a shop. I don't know how this works. Yeah. And uh, eventually, actually, funny enough, you mentioned social media. Like, uh, I, I went on Facebook and was like, just general post was like, man, I, I just want to tattoo. Like, what does a guy have to do to tattoo in this world? Yeah. And someone sent me a message and was like, hey, you should contact this guy named Alex. He owns a tattoo shop. He's a really nice guy. And uh, I, I know he's apprenticed some guys before. So I did. And I think at first, he I don't think he took me totally seriously. But after, like, another attempt, he saw my drawings and stuff. And uh, he was like, yeah, man, come on. Like, I can, I can help you out. Huh. Yeah. yeah, that could be a bumper sticker. What does the guy have to do to learn how to tattoo? Yeah, I didn't world? know. You know, if you don't know about this <laughs> yeah. culture, it, it, it makes no sense. It's not like you're trying to be offensive to the people in the business. You just don't know. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we, you know, we, our, our show is 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 viewed a lot by um, either apprentices. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm generalizing, but but the people we hear the most from are apprentices, people looking to get into tattooing, mm-hmm. people in very small towns with like two shops and, right. and no one can draw at either of the shops and they right. and they see what's happening online they're like wait i don't want to do what they're doing in my hometown i want to do what they're doing on instagram right uh, and it's that exact same thing like what the hell is a guy have to do to like learn this stuff why is yeah. it why can't i like how, how come I, I feel like everything that i say is wrong and i'm gonna get bashed for it or yeah definitely i mean that's i, I don't know that i caught well actually <laughs> i can say i caught some of that the the first tattoo shop i went to it was kind of a a weird situation she'd been in the business a long time i don't want to say who she was but uh sorry i keep adjusting this thing here i think i got it now there we go um she i think her business wasn't doing so well and i came in and was like hey my name is matt you know i I, i'm here my drawings i was wanting to get into the business and she just kind of attacked me and was like ah you kids these days wanting to tattoo you don't know anything about tattooing you can't make any money tattooing get out of here you know there's a tattoo shop on every corner now yeah. And I was like, oh, shit, man, maybe 
maybe tattooing is not a good idea. Right. And luckily, like this other dude who worked in there pulled me to the side and was like, "Hey, man, like, nah, it's it's not really that bad. Like, don't don't give up. Like, go to these other shops and check it out." And uh, so so I kept doing that, you know. And eventually, yeah. it worked out though. Yeah. So you end up getting so after multiple. Uh, uh, tell me a little bit about it. you said the guy's name was Alex that they had sent yeah. you to. So tell me because a lot of people will go to a shop and run into that exact same problem mm -hmm. and then uh and then they basically just go online and watch youtube videos and try to figure it out on their own yeah what what, what was the process like how many times did you have to approach him did you look at your portfolio the first time um so i think the first time i approached him i actually went into his shop i, I can't remember if he was there i don't think he was and i might have talked to his counter person or something showed them my drawing portfolio and it was kind of the typical response i was getting at the time like oh yeah but maybe we might we might call you you know we're not really looking for an apprentice and it was later on when I was getting frustrated with it, and I made that post that I, I contacted him directly, and he responded to that. Wow. And I had me come in and checked out my portfolio. And I, at that point, I had done enough tattoos on buddies where I'd taken some pictures of them, and you know, I showed him those as well. And he was like, "Well, your line work sucks, but your shading's not bad, hmm. um, and your drawings are good. So, you know, come on in, man, and I'll, I'll see what I can do." Oh, okay. So that's interesting. You showed him tattoos, not drawings, or both? both. Yeah, both, both definitely. Yeah. And I had been, uh, I'd been drawing stuff and sent it in to like Tattoo Flash as well. Uh -huh. So I had a bunch of pictures in the tattoo flash magazines of just stuff i had drawn um and a bunch of like new school stuff you know yeah and uh showed him all that stuff and he's like oh cool yeah all right you kind of you get the idea of what tattoos should look like in a drawing but you don't know how to tattoo so come yeah. in yeah I, I'm, I'm always curious about that I, and i love to hear it people will ask me about getting apprenticeships and my default answer has always been if you've been tattooing don't tell the potential mentor that you've ever done a tattoo just show them drawings yeah. and, and hope they never find out. But then sometimes it works the other way. I think Alex also was a self-taught guy. Uh, you know, okay. he, he, he was an outsider in the tattoo industry to some extent. So yeah. he was kind of sympathetic to that, I think. I think he, he didn't have that traditional mentality. And uh, I think that probably helped me get, uh, get in the door. Yeah, yeah. How, how was he as a mentor? Did you learn a lot? Yeah, I mean, Alex, yeah, he, he definitely taught me all the basics. You know, how to set up machines and pull clean lines and pack solid color and stuff like that. Um, it was kind of a quick, a quicker apprenticeship, I should say, like four months, and, and he put me on the floor doing small tattoos because, oh, okay. you know, my shading and stuff was pretty solid already when I went in, uh, like he said, and once the line work cleaned up, he's like, yeah, man, do start doing small tattoos at like 35%, you know, it was like, yeah. it was like a pretty, you know, you know, yeah. and, you know, low level gig getting in the door, but yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't want to spend any uh, or dive too deep into uh, into learning to tattoo in jail. But what was the difference like in the equipment that you were using when you first learned, and then whenever <laughs> you actually had someone show you how to use equipment? Yeah, so like in you know in jail, you work with what you have. Right. Um, you know, in, in like in jail, like in the small county jail, sometimes people you're doing like the pokes, hand poke stuff. You know, yeah, I yeah. never did any of the hand poke stuff. We're talking about pulling a motor out of like an electric razor or a tape yeah. player. Yeah. And, you know, you know, big pins, some tape, dental floss, whatever right, you got, whatever you, you, got, know, whatever you can use. bind a motor on a post to uh -huh. a tube. And then for needles, you know, actually, it's interesting, like people get really creative, man. And, and a, a guy taught me how to make like seven rounds in there. Really? Yeah. You know, you <laughs> it's pretty crazy. If you take <laughs> a brand new wire, you can get a hold of a lot of things in prison. You know, <laughs> right. if you've seen movies, like it's kind of true. You can if you know the right person, like, hey, you know, a guy on the maintenance crew. Can you get me a brand new wire bristle brush, like huh. yank some bristles out for me? Yeah. And, you know, they're almost the exact same as a tattoo needle. Huh. And uh, you can sand them down and put, like, seven of them together and, like, bundle it up with dental floss and yeah. heat it up. And it's like wax. It all binds together. And oh. you end up with just a little seven round. And you put oh. it on, like, a, a plastic tube out of a big pen and just oh. melt it on there. And you basically and you have, basically like, a seven it. round liner. So did that when you when you get, when you're apprenticing now uh, and you have an, an actual, like, setup, uh, a, a machine and, and actual needles that weren't fabricated from a, a bristle brush, sure. brush, do you feel like that, that, that it had helped you? tattooing with more difficult tools or yeah i yeah. mean i definitely think so uh i, I kind of hate to say it but yes yeah, sure i mean if me. you yeah. if you can learn to tattoo with a, a shitty homemade machine and a single needle and not blow it out and do a clean line mm -hmm. then yeah when you actually get a properly tuned machine with really good needles in it it's like oh wow this <laughs> this this is way better huh. you know this yeah. is this is not bad yeah yeah I, I, that doesn't surprise me i would i would think that's probably true and i um uh, and you probably at that point had a head start on someone that had, you know, that um, because I, my guess is, we you know, with the, we, you know, with um, 
tattooing was something that's not designed to to make tattoos that you know skin trauma is definitely an issue yeah. and and whether or not you knew that, that that's what you were looking for sure at that time is, is a whole different story i guess but but um, you definitely would have learned to have read skin trauma. Whenever you like make a line, you're like, "Oh wow, it's gushing blood," or it's yeah, really well, irritated, or it or just doesn't heal up right. You know, yeah. you see the line falls out. You know, yeah. you realize, "Oh, that something wasn't right there." Yeah. So, um, uh, so you said that you, you were tattooing within about four months after be, after starting that apprenticeship. How how long did you stay at that shop? I was with Alex for about a year. Yeah. You know, and uh, after that, I went over to another shop that was over nearby town and uh, stayed there for about four years. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And is that when, when did you, I mean, I guess being from a, it makes sense that, you know, coming from a comic background that you would lean towards, you know, neo-trad or some illustrative mm -hmm. style of tattooing. Yep. Did you, did you kind of gravitate towards that from the very start or were you trying to do more? realism or uh, what, yeah, I how think, did it evolve i think in the very beginning i was kind of obsessed with like uh, i guess like mike devries was kind of the man at the time yeah. and i was thinking oh yeah i want to do this color realism stuff mm -hmm. and i, I kind of tried to jump right into that way too fast like a lot of people and realized like oh look, nope that's not as easy as it looks in that video he made yeah and uh backed off and also like watching stuff come back pretty quickly realized like oh no i kind of like solid line work and like mm -hmm. more black in my tattoos that was one of the things at first i was i also liked new school a lot so it was just kind of color bombing stuff you know i wasn't really using black properly at all or, or much black at all yeah and um you see that come back six months later and it's like oh yeah yeah and then some guy down the street's like hey man you should put more black in your tattoos <laughs> right. and and you do it and all of a sudden it's like oh yeah, that, that looks way better yeah yeah so, is I, I did I did a talk at a, at an art uh, at a museum in Memphis not too long ago the Dixon Art uh, Museum and, and you know and, and it's all these um, you know it's a lot of older people that appreciate um, Renaissance paintings and things like that and of course in fine art the the idea of having a tube of black paint is ridiculous yeah you know they they're like yeah. and so kind of trying to convince these people that like when they're asking because I'm talking about I think the talk was like if Rembrandt were a tattooer or something like that. It was about art-focused tattooing yeah. and, and what we've pulled from, you know, from, from painting and from fine art. And when I got to the point uh, talking about the main difference is that we, like, have to use black. Black is yeah. uh, so important. And, and, and the people in the crowd wanted to say, you know, wanted to say like, well, you could really mix, like, purple and green and black, whatever and create, like, yeah, not, I mean, really. You could put some purple in your black and see if you can make it blacker, I guess, if you yeah. want. But that's about yeah, the yeah. extent of it. I mean, and, uh, I, I think it's hard for people to get. Yeah, that was also kind of my, I, I also, like, in addition to comic books, uh, while I was locked up, I, I started doing stuff. You could get magazines, so I'd get like all these different art magazines I could get my hands on that would teach you about painting and how to do like colored pencil stuff, and just read it all. I kind of tried to absorb as much as I could, mm -hmm. and uh, so I went into tattooing with a lot of that mentality, of, like this painterly mentality too. Exactly what you're talking about. It's like, oh, no, I don't do black. I'll use this deep purple concentrate with red, and it'll be great, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, two years later, it's not great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny. <laughs> It's funny how that works, and how fun, and how the. It's one of those things that I think will always, and that's a, it's a small one, but it's one of those things that will always keep us a little bit separated from the fine art world. You know, some yeah. Of the, well, it's yeah. A, the medium certainly it has a different, I don't know, shelf life, if you will. You mm -hmm. know, our, our, we have to deal with different conditions. You know, our stuff's not in a museum in a climate-controlled, non-UV environment. It's right. some guy outside on his boat all day fishing. Yeah. You know, getting baked by the sun. It's not. You know, we definitely have to account for that for sure yeah yeah um i i, I did flip through uh, some of your work but I, I but but not a ton do you most everything i saw was no i did see a sleeve uh what's your ratio of like of, uh, of uh like single sitting tattoos to large scale multi so stuff? that's funny that you say that i mean i guess i don't really think honestly i don't focus that much on my social media like i should i suppose like working at ink and dagger honestly like they do a really great job of yeah. promoting their shop it brings a lot of business in so i think it can make you get a little i don't know i focus more on the tattoos and on my family right now i'm not really thinking about social media so that's since you say that it makes me think that's funny because i think i do more like large tattoos okay and i don't post them as often actually because i feel like they don't get any impact like hmm. It's better to post just a picture of this part of the sleeve than to post the whole sleeve. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, if it's your whole sleeve and on this tiny little screen and people just like, ah, what? I, I can't see anything. Just keep yeah. it. They're not going to stop and zoom in and look and try to pan around the whole image. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if I do a sleeve, I'm just going to post, but oh, here's this one cool little part of the sleeve mm -hmm. most of the time. Yeah, that's a, I think that's such a, a, an interesting and important point. A couple of years ago, uh, we, were, we were podcasting with um, – Aaron Springs, you're, mm -hmm. you know Aaron Springs, yeah, uh, and he was, and he's young, he's 
well, maybe he's like he's he's a good bit younger than me, and he came up. He started tattooing in the Instagram kind of era, mm-hmm. and he's awesome. He does beautiful work. But he he made a comment to me that that I had never considered at, up to that point, and that was whenever I'm designing a tattoo, I'm thinking about how it looks at a two by two square, mm. and I was just like, what for real? And he was like, yeah. And so to your point. You post a whole sleeve, which I do. I'll post a whole sleeve, and you're absolutely right. When I'm flipping through and I come across my own post, I almost glaze past it, mm-hmm. um, only because there's too much complexity. Yeah, it's, it's too just, much. It's too much to take in quickly, yeah. and, and when it's shrunk down so small, it has no impact really when you're looking at it quickly. Mm-hmm. If you want to stop, take time to zoom in. Of course, yeah, it looks yeah. awesome, but but who wants to do that? Yeah, at a quick glance, <laughs> right. no one, no one's really doing that. I feel like. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. That's that's really interesting, and and I noticed um, people doing that. Uh, uh, Jeff Gogway pops to mind, and that you know he's got a full back piece, and he'll he works in a what seems like a very dark room with a one light, mm-hmm. and so he'll photograph the back piece from a three quarter angle with the person laying down with the light catching one part of it, and the rest of it falls in the dark. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, he's getting into photography. <laughs> you know, yeah. maybe I don't know why is he doing that. I, I'd like to see the whole tattoo, but that's probably yeah. I mean, I, I mean, you know, Jeff's certainly a super artistic guy. Maybe he is getting into Maybe photography, but also he's probably just being smart about making cool-looking photos for Instagram. Because, yeah. I mean, honestly, if, if you're talking about social media, it's it's worth asking, do people want to see your tattoos as much as they want to see a cool photo, mm-hmm. right? I mean, yeah, well, honestly, they might just want to, if it's funny or, like, gross or rude or whatever, you know, like snake pit kind of shit, it's going to get a lot of attention. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of reasons they might want to see it. Yeah, yeah. It, which which leads us into a, into a, another interesting topic in, in in how we represent our tattoos in social media. You know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of backlash from tattooers about you know, like the tattoo truth fairy and stuff like that. Saying mm-hmm. like, well, people are saturating and dodging and burning and adding inner glows, doing all these editing to ta- edit, all these ed- very obvious edits to tattoos. But it's like, well, I mean, you know, are, are we trying to show the public a, a realistic idea of what their tattoo is going to look like in 10 years or are we just trying to sell them on a cool image yeah man yeah. i have pretty strong opinions on this i think i'd love to hear them. um i definitely try to only put realistic photos out there right mm-hmm. i don't yeah i can take images i can take photos with a polarized filter and with you know studio lighting and films and all that good stuff and then go in and adjust it so that it looks super amazing and eye-catching and everything but like, no tattoo in the wild is ever truly black, right? right? If you're saturating that down to, like, this absolute zero on an OLED screen, no tattoo ever looks like that. It doesn't look like that fresh with a light hitting it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah, I'll use a polarized uh, filter sometimes to take a picture of a tattoo, but I also tend to go in there, honestly, like, my thing is I'll, like, bump the saturation down on the, t- on the photo yeah. because it doesn't look that bright in real life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think editing a photo is fine. If you're making it look more like it does in real life, yeah. If you're making it look better, that's that's cheating. Right. I mean, honestly, it just <laughs> yeah. is. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, if you can do it, if you want, whatever, that's on you. Mm-hmm. Um, don't get mad if your client comes back and is like, "Hey, man, why does my tattoo look like all the picture on Instagram?" Yeah, you know. Yeah. Because I've I've had a client do that one time. He, uh, the guy had you know like maybe like, not dark skin, but like kind of like you know like medium skin tone. And yeah. he got some kind of like geometric fine line dot work black work thing, and it was a cool tattoo. Mm-hmm. And uh, he liked it at first. Came back a little bit later and was like, "Hey man, you know, I was like, why doesn't it look like this?" And showed me some of these like totally yeah. desaturated, totally white skin with yeah. total black tattoo on Instagram. And he's like, "Well, I, you know, I want, can we make it look more like this?" <laughs> yeah. And I, and I literally did this. You know, I took my phone. And I was like, "Let me see your arm, man." And I went and I like skin tone down, saturation yeah. down, blacks all the way. And I was like, yeah. oh, you want it to look like that? Right. It does. It does. It, that's what it looks like. Share the photo. Yeah, that's man. The, right. Yeah. So I don't, I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't hate on anybody for what they want to do. Like, mark it how you want, man. You've yeah. got to deal with the clients when the tattoo doesn't look like what they expect. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I lean more your way. I, I do agree with you. But, but I could see, what, like, going back to what we were talking about a minute ago, someone who really – saturate or do, you know does whatever you know, saturates or desaturates their tattoo depending on the effect that they want you know they might look at jeff gogway photographing a tattoo from a three-quarter angle with one concentrated light source and go like yeah the tattoo doesn't like that either yeah <laughs> I, I guess that's fair right i mean right. i suppose you could make that argument mm-hmm. but in I, I i would also argue though that if you were standing there in that light in jeff's studio it would look like that yeah. As opposed to you will never be able, you don't ever walk around with like polarized filters right here, uh-huh. you know, and, you know, 
desaturating button. <laughs> right. can, that's never going to look like that in real life. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Jeff may have put some filters on there. I don't know if he did. <laughs> yeah, Good yeah, for yeah. you, Jeff. Do yeah, you I don't know either. I'm not trying to pick on Jeff, but I, I do think that's an interesting topic, and it's definitely a, a topic that's highly debated. And I, and I um, or no, it's really not. The people who do it are ashamed, and they pretend like they don't do it. They never defend it. Yeah. But you know, but. But um, uh, but it's been called out so um, you know just just so often that I uh, thought you know I thought it was worth worth addressing. It's um, just it's, uh, to me it's just it is frustrating as someone who's always tried to be a very honest tattooer who wants to build tattoos to last and I, I don't try to use any tricks to you know make it better for a photo. I want it to be a good tattoo that's, you're gonna really still like in ten years you know. Yeah. And uh, kind of the the I don't know what the right word here is the kind of the gimmickiness the cat I don't know the you know, the, the super eye-catchy photo nature of the way people are approaching tattoos sometimes, it's very frustrating because, I don't know, I feel like you're sucking up. You, you can suck up all these clients, but you're not really giving them what they ever expected, if that yeah. makes sense. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I I, uh, I, com I completely get it, and I do agree. Um, so you, you mentioned earlier, we uh, this has turned in uh, this series so far. We've only done two podcast from here but they've both been with ink and dagger uh tattooers so you're you've moved from where you were to ink and dagger now how did that transition take place how'd you end up there uh the last shop i was at was impulse ink in ackworth georgia uh -huh. sorry my glasses are all uh, getting cool. all steamy i'm just gonna take them off here uh, all right all right um yeah i was in impulse ink in ackworth georgia for before ink and dagger for two years and uh when i decided it was time to move on i was like looking at potentially opening my own studio or trying to go work with russ because Russ had kind of been, you know, guy, a lot of people look up to Russ, obviously, but I'd always loved Russ's tattoos. I felt like he was this really honest tattooer, the way, way he tattooed. It's, you know, good, solid tattooing, and the way he ran his business I always admired. So uh, I went over, just went over to Russ's shop one day and was like, hey, man, you know, would you guys be interested in me maybe coming over here at some point? And they were like, yeah, come do a guest spot, man. Come check it out and see what happens. So went back to the other shops, and which was, which was a private studio kind of situation. And I was like, hey, man, I'm, you know, you know I've been thinking about for a long time, I might want to work at Ink and Dagger, and would it be cool if I guess about, yeah, man, go ahead, and uh, just went just from there, pretty much was a seamless transition, and huh. yeah, it was really awesome. So the shop you were at before that was more of a private studio, just a couple of you guys? Uh, yeah, there were, I think when I left, it was three of us. There was room for four, very small space, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it was just, you know, kind of do your appointments, you can come and go as you please, no set hours necessarily, bring your own clientele sort of situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about, um, uh, uh, I, I know at Ink and Dagger, I've, I've, I've tattooed there uh, once or twice, and, and I know they have great kind of systems and processes in place to make oh, your yeah. life much easier. Has it free? Do you work on a lot of it? Do you work in other mediums? Or do you, has the crew or the, um, yeah, the, uh, the the other tattooers there, do you guys, like, I know a lot of shops, I don't know if Ink and Dagger does it, they do a lot of like art nights or painting yeah. nights or like that. Do you, do you guys do any of that, or do you do it on your own? Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, my life has been kind of dominated by my kids the last few years. I've got a one-year-old and a three-year-old boy, so when oh, I'm not tattooing, it's like where you are. game on, you know, yeah, with, with yeah. the kids at home trying to wrestle those guys. Um, but, yeah, lately I have actually been getting more back into watercolor stuff, okay. you know, trying to paint, like, flash stuff. And uh, we do art nights, and uh, Russ has been kind of, like, hoping everybody would get more into just painting more, like, just wall flash to hang up, you know, everybody. Yeah. And just, instead, we a lot of times we'd go in there and everybody kind of, you know, I'm painting, you're drawing, whatever, different stuff. But we're kind of trying to focus more on doing one thing, which I think is cool. It's motivated me at least to, to paint more. So, yeah, I've been yeah. painting a lot more lately. You use watercolor in like, uh, you like a like for tattoo flash? Or do you, uh, do you ever do like plain air, any like loose watercolor? Or is it all very tight? Uh, no, for rendered? watercolor, you know, really like liquid acrylics, mostly stuff uh, okay. like that. I, yeah. I don't really do watercolor outside of tattoo art. Mm -hmm. um, outside of tattoo art, it's more like I prefer oil or acrylic. And I, I used to do like Prismacolor pencils back in the day a ton. Yeah. So yeah, got a bunch of like 40 hour Prismacolor drawings yeah. hanging up somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I did a lot of that as a kid too, or not as a kid, even in my, you know, in my teens and, and 20s a lot of prismacolor and i haven't touched a colored pencil in i don't know how long oh dude they take so long i mean to do yeah. anything with i mean they're beautiful like i think they're kind of an underrated uh medium honestly i think mm -hmm. that if you spend 30 hours making this gorgeous colored pencil um i, I always call them colored pencil paintings man people get offended yeah. by that but i mean to call it a drawing seems disrespectful the amount of time and, and the i mean it's, just, it's beautiful art yeah. just because it's not oil paint i don't i don't think that diminishes it at all yeah so uh, you, you're in a shop that's that's kind of known for being a very technology forward shop. Are you a what? Are you a, a digital? Do you design digitally? Yeah, mostly? I, I uh, like I said, I kind of always, you know, knew about Russ, following him in the magazines, going to conventions, trying to peek over and see what he's tattooing. So yeah, yeah when 
when he started kind of presenting all the digital stuff on social media, I immediately was like, well, whatever this guy's doing must be a good idea. So mm -hmm. I, uh, at the time, bought myself a, a Wicom, um, you know, monitor, still have it, yeah, 24-inch, and uh, hooked yeah, up yeah. to my computer, started using Clip Studio, yeah. and that was probably like 2013. So yeah, I've been doing. You digital. still using Clip Studio? Uh, yeah, still on yeah. the iPad. Yeah. yeah, no Procreate for me. Sorry, huh. guys. Yeah, yeah, awesome. <laughs> I'm sure Russ is proud. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's real proud. I'm one of the, one of the uh, old school guys at this point. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've realized that makes you old when you use Clip Studio now. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting thing. Yeah, yeah. I never. I tried it for a little while, and I never. It, it, I, I never uh, did. I worked though on the same. Uh, I, I bought like that. 13-inch Cintiq hybrid that was like it was like an yeah. Android system, or whatever. And yeah. I worked on that for several years, and then I think after guest body at Ink and Dagger, uh, maybe Russ had just gotten the like the 27-inch, yep. and so I went home and bought that. And yeah. so I've been using that ever since, and I love it. And then I switched over recently when my Cintiq, the 13-inch, which lasted a long time. It was a, it wasn't good for anything except for drawing because the the Android like operating system was kind of weird, like apps didn't work right on yeah. it and stuff. But um, there was one drawing app called Artflow that I used, and it was pretty simple, but it's all I needed. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I, so I used it like crazy, and then whenever it died, I finally broke down and bought an iPad Pro, and I've been using Procreate, uh, yeah. which is fine. It works. Yeah, it I mean, I, I I've drawn with Procreate. It's not like I hate it or anything. I've just uh, I used well, you know, I used Photoshop a lot. Um, I've always been kind of into computers on the side, so I grew up kind of tooling around in Photoshop. And Clip Studio is. They basically stole their interface from Photoshop. You know, yeah. it's exactly like Photoshop. So, yeah. uh, started using Clip Studio. Took to it kind of naturally. Watched a few videos, got comfortable. And you know, when Procreate came out, however many like six, five years later or something, I was like, well, I don't, I don't know why to use that. I'm really good with Clip Studio at this point. I don't yeah. need to switch over. So I just still use Clip Studio. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I struggled a little bit um, with it. it. If I had been using something else, I, well, I, I still I still use Photoshop on the big Cintiq. Uh, but when I'm drawing on the on the iPad, I looked for the Artflow app that I used on the mm -hmm. Cintiq Hybrid, and I just couldn't yep. find it. And so I, I was like, well, everyone else seems to be using Procreate. And luckily, I know enough people from doing this podcast that have that dove deep into Procreate. Yeah. And I have their phone numbers. Nice. That whenever I got it, I could just be like shoot a picture of it and be like, well, how do I make this work? Yeah. How do I do this? And Dude. so I completely like just learned from everyone who had figured it out. Whenever I go to try to use Procreate in the shop, I'm, I'm, I'm literally walking around like one of the younger tattooers like, hey, how do you how do you do this thing? They're like, oh, you got to swipe with three fingers. Like, what? Yeah. How would I know that? <laughs> yeah, Without, you know, there's not a menu? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the thing that drives me the craziest about it is like a lot of times, you know, I draw kind of slowly and I'll make a mark and sometimes I don't lift my pencil up or, or my pen, whatever, stylus up fast enough. And then it like, changes that mark into whatever shape it thinks yeah. it should be yeah, yeah. and like instantly as soon as that started happening i'm on the phone like how do i turn that dumb shit off like, yeah the, don't tell me what kind of mark i want to make right. i know yeah that was, that was crazy so uh not to you know i mean hopefully procreate will sponsor our show at some point <laughs> so maybe we should maybe we should clip this hey, part out <laughs> i sell brush sets for procreate so yeah. go procreate go all the way yeah you, you guys oh, are yeah, awesome too yeah, yeah. Well, let's have, are you doing uh have you Built some brush sets. Yeah, well, just one. Yeah, I made a brush set last year for uh, Tattoo Smart. Yeah. Um, it's the Pocket Watch and Compass brush set. Oh, I okay. Think a lot of I've got a lot of positive feedback on it. I know yeah. it's something that I kind of built to use for myself in uh -huh. some to some extent. You know, yeah, looking yeah. at because I do a lot of like black and gray stuff. You get a lot of requests for pocket watches and compasses, and you yeah. want to be able to give a variety to your clients. So I built this kind of tool set that I thought would work well for me to make you know things mm -hmm. for my clients and. A, and a, quick you know efficient manner mm -hmm. and uh i think a lot of other people found it useful so yeah 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 it's awesome um yeah it's funny you bring it up we uh we just podcasted recently with uh kelly Se severson severson mm -hmm. i don't know how to pronounce his last name but he did the magic yeah so, or the whatever you i don't know what that's called they call it magic shit or magic something shit like that. Yeah. yeah that's it and um, we had a long we had a really great conversation a long conversation about uh about the idea of um of brush sets versus basically digital flash yeah. Where you're dropping flash down, and uh, and how hard it is, in some people's opinion, to like to understand that that's what that it's basically flash, and it's not. See, it seemed like there was a little bit of pushback whenever it, whenever you could just like instead of uh, you call it a brush set, and you drop an image, and it's an it's not a brush, it's not a mark, it's an image. Yeah, you know? I mean, definitely, there's a lot of people who don't like that concept, but yeah. to them, I say, okay, well. You know, nine years ago, I was in a tattoo shop with flash all over the walls, and we had a file folder with line drawings mm -hmm. that we photocopied to the size we wanted yeah. instead of adjusting a dial on an iPad. So it's mm -hmm. absolutely no different. And, and no to different. people who want to do custom tattoos, they're still going to draw their own tattoos. I don't, I mean, honestly, sorry, Russ, 
I use some tattoo smart products, but I don't use a lot of stamps because yeah. I like to draw my tattoos. Right. You know, so I mean, yeah. if it's a stamp that can be helpful, like Killian's set, where it's like, you know, it gives you like the proportions of a head or something you can draw on top of it. Yeah. I, I find that kind of thing more enticing for me because yeah. I want to draw my tattoos. Yeah. 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 But nothing wrong with it either way. No, I mean, whatever. You know, if you're just, like, doing the street shop thing and you want to, like, just stamp a skull and tattoo it, I don't hate on you whatsoever. There might be times if I do that, you know, I, I wouldn't frown on that whatsoever. Did I see that Jeff Insminger put out a – does he have a skull yeah, set on there? Yeah, he has a skull set out. Yeah, dude. If I were tattooing skulls in a street shop, I would just be dropping those things all the time. Why not, man? Those skulls are awesome. I mean, they're, it's sick. It's flash, whatever. Yeah. If people like it, go for it. Yeah, yeah. Well, where, where are we on time on this thing? Okay, sweet. Yeah, I'll try. We'll try to wrap it. Up. So, where where are you off to from? Um, where are you off to from here? Are you are you traveling a lot? Or are you nah, just doing? not right now. You know. Oh yeah, a one at home with the kids right, right now. Yeah, yeah. living the question. married life with two little boys. So trying to devote a lot of time to them um, while being very busy at work at Ink and Dagger. You know, we're yeah. a busy shop, so uh, always busy drawing at home, getting ready for an appointment. You know. How long have you been married? I've been married for uh, seven years now. Okay, so you guys waited a little while to have a kid. Yeah, um, we uh, we were thirty. We're the same age. So we were thirty two when we had our first kid. And I'm thirty six yeah. now. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So you're not. You just. Um, so very little. Very little traveling. No traveling on the books going forward. Uh, right now, no. I got nothing on the books. You know, lately I've I've been staying at home to try to help out. So I'm like maybe one convention a year is about all I'm doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. Just staying at home. What do you think? What do you get out of them? I mean, do you uh, conventions? Do, yeah. Uh, I think it's cool to come see a lot of familiar faces, for mm -hmm. sure. You know, I, I, I uh, certainly don't get out as much as I used to, li you know, living the married mm -hmm. father life. So uh, come over here and you see a lot of buddies that you haven't seen in a long time or in a year, you know. Yeah. I, I really like this show. It's it's a, a pretty good community in here. Yeah, it is. I, I love this show. It, it really is. I, I always tell, I always say it's one of my favorite shows, um, and I think people think that I say it because uh, – because they bring us here every year and you yeah. know and put us up and all that kind of stuff, but it, but it 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 truly is. It's like uh, it's it's a show where there are a lot of like solid artists. There are no rock stars here. You don't have yeah. rock star row like you walk through. And not to put any other show down, but like sure. you walk through Hell City in Columbus and you, there's an aisle you can go down, and everyone on yeah. the aisle has half a million followers. For sure. or whatever. Yeah, I mean I worked Hell City it, last year and I like Hell City, but yeah. you know this yeah. is like, this is like an different. intimate thing here, you know, yeah. uh, and I, I yeah. do enjoy it. You know my favorite thing about it is that they don't put the um, this only the only the the, um, what do you call these? Like the frames on the end have the have the uh, yeah curtains. the backdrop here. The curtain. yeah the rest of it you can see everyone around you. I like that because yeah. you can like I feel like you have more neighbors. Yeah, it does make it feel you know you don't feel so isolated yeah. in your booth. Yeah, for sure. I didn't. I almost didn't notice it, uh, or I didn't notice it. Uh, I knew something was different about the thing, but I was here a year or maybe two before someone that I was podcasting with was like, "Oh, this is what I love that about this show." And I was like, "Holy shit!" I had never even like. I'm so oblivious to obvious crap like that. I <laughs> never notice obvious stuff ever. <laughs> yeah. I get in trouble yeah. for it all the time. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'll, I'll answer this question for you. But uh, um, if people want to book with you, they go to the Ink and Dagger website. Yeah, yeah. Uh, www.inkanddagger.com right. and click yeah. book an appointment. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, man, thanks. It was great. Meeting absolutely. You. And, Pleasure. Uh, yeah, and uh, guys, give them a follow. Your Instagram handle is just Matt Brumelow. At right? Matt Brumelow. Man, you did it right. I, I, I changed it a while back. I had to, like, rebrand everything, but I, yeah. I was, like, Brumelow Inc. forever from back uh, in the day, and then yeah. I was like, ah, I just I just yeah. want to be my name. Can yeah, I just yeah. be my name? So luckily it was there. Yeah, yeah. I have yeah. a weird name, so that worked out for me. I, I, I screwed <laughs> up like a lot of people who, yeah, they, and your name yeah. is difficult. No, there's no reason to make it yeah. harder. Yeah, I screwed up early on and thought you were supposed to be clever and not use your name and your handle at all, all right. and uh, now I'm stuck. So, but, <laughs> right. Thank you guys, as always, for supporting what we do. Thank you to our good friend Shaquem and Space City yes. Tat Tatty Show. And uh, thanks, Matt. Yeah. We'll see you guys next time.